Hello. There we go. I guess I'll reread the intro now that I have Fraps going. Um, uh, this is game two of the finals, DominateDominion.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament number 20. Uh, this is point defense versus Pays Evelyn Child Support. Pays Evelyn Child Support is up 1-0 to zero in this game right now. On the left side of the map, we have Sauron playing as Zin Zhao, Lissic playing as Alistar, Talos PA playing as Jarvan IV, NMKH playing as LeBlanc, and uh, Necrogen playing as Nunu. I'm one half of your casters. I'm Gander, and casting with me is... Chilver here, and I will introduce the red team. We have Enfeed on Udyr. We have Ezreal, or no, we have Captain Booberry on Ezreal. Uh, Painkiller on Amumu, Hayfarted on Brand, and Confiteris on Garen. Some interesting picks, as I said before, but we are waiting for a pause, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, hopefully the game will have start. Oh, actually, maybe the pause break won't be necessary. If it's stable, we'll be jumping right in. I just want to know if I can get this cracker or not. If we can get this game started. Yes! There we Countdown. go. Countdown! Three, two, one, party time! Oh, actually, we still have like a minute. Okay, well. <laughs> we are waiting for the platforms to finish and also players to buy their items. Um, expecting to see maybe some new things here with these new champions. We do see that Doran Shield on Udyr, but then going with the regrowth pendant and the level 1 boots. So going for some mobility and regen. On the flip side, we don't have anything too interesting. Zin Zhao has the components of a phage starting off in this match. We have LeBlanc with the components for a haunting, guys. Very, very good item on LeBlanc, especially because she hits so hard early levels, especially when you hit level 6. Just instantly, you're going to be able to burst down anyone who doesn't have even decent defenses on the opponent team. And we have the Nunubot laugh going through Necrogen, just spamming that monotonous laugh. We see the catalyst on that Nunu going bot lane against that Udyr. Otherwise, just prospector items. Jarvan also has the components of a beige low, so the Damascian buddies here on the blue team going with the same uh, starting items. I, I just wish that, you know, Garen and, and Jarvan can get along. They don't need to be fighting like this. It's bad for their country. Both teams leaving their summoner platforms and heading on up towards the upper end of the map. You know, and Udyr going down on the bottom. Looks like Garen and Zinn are opting to pick up the respective middle points for the, each side of the map, the drill and refinery. And uh, LeBlanc will be the first one to stick her head out. Is going to take that side shot? No, no one's going to take that shot across the walkway there. They're both going to go ahead and go into the poke delay game at the top. You see, Bran has taken command of that top rush area. That's just been so crucial. But LeBlanc actually jumps over, surprises him with the hop, and chains him as she hops back on across. But Amuma lands a great bandage toss. Pillar of Flame does hit LeBlanc. The fight has spread out across the whole path here. We do see the spin one coming out from Garen, and LeBlanc's clone is actually being focused by Ezreal as we see LeBlanc, the main form. Trying to kite Brand in and out of the brush, tries to get away, will eventually get taken down. Jarvan has also been exhausted. Ezreal's gonna pick up that kill. Yes, a double kill for Ezreal. And we see Brand and Ezreal now trying to focus on the Alistar. That's a quick kill as they both use their abilities to clean that up at the windmill. And we will have Pex with the first three cap of the game. And Zinza with the first back cap of the game. Sauron going down for that bottom point and Garen chasing it. But looks like J4 is going to be right there to intercept that. Yes, he's even going to use the airborne to do it. Making sure that Sauron is able to secure that neutral. And now three on one is really the way to kill Garen. Right there, him getting no, taken out. Looked like he was gonna have uh, enough time to get off another ability, but not quite. Half hard coming down to the bottom, throwing that AOE, but LeBlanc lands the stun. MKH locking him down for a moment there. Captain Booberry coming down on the bottom, throwing off them skill shots. Ezreal's skill shots are so good. They do a lot of damage, and oh, distorting right out of that. Pillar of Flame, good move there by MMKH, but they're all getting slowly worn down. MMKH really, really low on mana right now, opting to drop that recall there, and we see sort of what we saw in the other game. We see the top being kind of sustaining and the bottom being kind of chaotic right now. Talos PA taking a good burst right there, MMKH landing a stun, but really doesn't have any mana. Talos PA really doesn't have any health. Sauron really has a lot of silenced, and uh, things are going bad down there. We do see Garen continuing the chase, doesn't need mana, so gonna keep running through. But two players have teleported out, and LeBlanc actually jumps over to the speed shrine. Very good use of that distortion so far. 
really liking what we've seen. Garen starts to channel onto the quarry as Hayparted tries to clean out some of the minions. We do see Jarvan and Nuna coming down at full health, though Jarvan's going to jump right across. No, actually, just wants to interrupt both, but there is the ultimate catch. Both of them within his barriers alongside Nunabot. Nuna's gonna start the absolute zero. There is LeBlanc with the slow, extra slow, really, to assist with that. And they're going to give a double kill to Nunu. And point defense is starting their assault once again in the bot lane. We see LeBlanc going straight for the tower. She's gonna start the channel, but Ezra and Udi are coming through. It's quickly going to turn into a 2v1. LeBlanc not in the best of places right now. Tries to get some damage onto their blinks right on over as Udi tries to get the bear stand stunned and will give up any sort of offensive for now. Meanwhile, top lane. Xin Zhao has come to help Alistar and gets the 2v1 gank against Amubu. They're going to channel this and they're going to cap it as Jarvan also comes up to help. Going to trade spots with Alistar. Alistar just scouting out the area to make sure he can push anyone back to secure this window. Captain Blueberry linking up with that arcane shift to be able to get some damage in on Lissic. Tao Pei is the one with the most health, so he's going to hang around on the... Whoa, MMKH, what did you do to Captain Blueberry? That was very unfriendly, what just happened to Ezreal there. Blanc distorting up and just putting a lot of hurt on him. Sauron, who was hiding in the bushes, decides to reveal himself now, but Painkiller at full health and mana don't want to stand next to him for too long, and the sadness is contagious, chasing MMKH up around that point. MMKH coming down, throwing down a little bit of a shot to break that channel that Halfheart had going there, but Sauron's going to get intercepted by Captain Booberry there. And MMKH knows he can't do anything, so he's going to go ahead and go for the ballsiest recall ever! <laughs> Wow, both skill shots barely missing that LeBlanc. LeBlanc gets out safely, and the windmill goes back in favor of Pace Evelyn Child support. Meanwhile, bot lane, we see Udyr and Nunu duking it out. And normally, we've seen that Udyr and Nunu bot lane gets very stale, but this game has been an exception. Both teams putting down the focus, point defense returning to their heavy bot lane play, and we see Pax has been prepared once again. They're trying to fight it off. They've been sending just equal numbers to match here in the bot lane. Meanwhile, in the middle, we see Ezra gets taken down, and now Bran is caught completely out of position. Jarvan cuts him off and he tries to kite back and forth and make a getaway. A movement just trying to run as Alistar and uh, LeBlanc continue to chase. There's the snare. It's going to land, but Brand has come back. Alistar not in a really good place. Gets the pulverize. Tries to run. Will another bandage toss come out? Or even a skill shot? There is the fireball from Brand to pick up that kill. A move at low health, but still trying to stick around for extra assistance. The storm shield on LeBlanc is keeping her tanky, but she's out of mana once again. Mana just so important for LeBlanc. LeBlanc gets a basic attack. There's the storm shield. No, the skill shot will not hit. Brand's going to get the stun. A move is still sticking around. Maybe just looking for another stun and a getaway to help catch this kill as LeBlanc continues to run using her passes to get away and Brand still chasing through. Amumu is seen of course as he battles away that clone which does not do damage but it is a good distraction. Amumu gets the stun, gets the tantrum, will die alongside but it helps pick up the kill for Brand. Brand gets the shutdown goes for LeBlanc. LeBlanc doing a, uh, a little bit of a missing with that skill shot there but uh, fortunately, she was able to get the kill in the end, though Painkiller did a very good job of making use of his abilities there, getting low on health, kind of hanging back out away, only moving in to range where he actually had an opportunity to deploy his Banish Toss, otherwise staying safely distant. Um, that's why he, he's become known for the Painkiller survival method of having double-digit hit points, because he knows how to still be effective and threatening, even at those low hit point values, by being able to sort of go in and out of a fight as his cooldowns are up and minimize the amount of risk that he puts himself to. Lissick going in for Captain Blueberry up at the top lens, a good headbutt and airborne combo on him. MMKH with a little bit of a distortion play there into the middle of the fight and then back on out of it to avoid being immediately focused, but everyone else gets cleaned up as a result, and now it's LeBlanc versus um, the Graveyard, unfortunately, as Painkiller wow. lands a nice bandage toss in that uh, engagement up there. Painkiller is just landing some really good skills. The bandage tosses, allowing him to jump over the wall and help initiate or save. And really good Crystal Sad Mummy. And that last fight is exactly what I was talking about. The AoE potential from uh, Pace Evelyn Child Support is just scary good. You get the Curse of the Sad Mummy on top of the True Shot Barrage with the Pyroclasm and Garen spinning over all the enemies. Meanwhile, Bot Lane in feed is caught though in a 2v1. 
Point Defense just loves their 2v1 games here in bot lane. They want to shut that Udyr down. They want to change the pace of the game going for this Boneyard, but Brand and Garen are prepared. It is a 3v2 though. They have the tower advantage, and here comes Udyr. Look at that speedy Udyr with that revive mastery, speeding all the way through to help defend this tower. That's going to allow Garen to branch off, going to start dueling against Jarvan. No, Jarvan's just going to go right through and pick up that health relic, slows Garen down. Really good play by Jarvan in that cutting ability. Of course, Garen doesn't have a direct gap closer, just has that speed boost. He will pick up the speed shrine, though Jarvan actually just barely missed it. They're going to branch off to help finish off LeBlanc as Painkiller has been chasing her away. One running away, that's one of the last things you want to run into is a Garen and you see Halfhard there throwing down that Hextech Sweeper. The Hextech Sweeper seeing a lot of use, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, abilities uh, used to check those bushes throughout this uh, tournament so far today. Sauron getting kind of caught by himself a little bit there, uh, able to put out some hurt before he is taken down, but now it is up to Alistar to try and kill Halfhard. It looks like he's really going for it, but... Afar does have that stun, and Captain Booberry is following him, doing a lot of that chip damage with those shots, and Lissig is able to secure that kill, but he should have plenty of time to recall if he goes for it right away. It looks like Booberry is not opting to chase after him. Painkiller getting chased by, away by Talith PA. Lots of chase going on, lots of movement in this game. People seem to be liking the active being mobile on the map. And MKH uh, gets that slow on Confidarius, kind of discourages him from following a little bit. And Alistar actually did not recall. Lisk is still around, but Painkiller lands that bandage toss and takes him down. Meanwhile, top lane Ezreal going to be holding off against Jarvan. Bottom lane, or the block actually goes up to pick up the kill onto the Muma. Bottom lane, we see Udyr coming back down to help Garen, but a little bit too late. Left Garen alone and sits out, and Dunu just capitalized on it right away after they have been dueling 2v2. And now MMKH all alone, no one nearby to stop this drill capture. Definitely going to succeed in that. It's also a 2v1 here in bot lane, so Brand needs to choose. Eyes go to drill or down to the Boneyard. Going to let Udyr defend this on his own as Udyr has been sitting rather health. Takes down since now as Nunu was a little bit too focused onto the tower. Meanwhile, LeBlanc's channel does get stopped by Brand. Brand just trying to stall it out as long as possible until Mumu gets here. But look at that burst coming down from LeBlanc. LeBlanc can get down, jump over with that ult. That will be a quick kill onto Brand, but Brand is just going to go ahead and start the channel. So Mumu has shown up. Meanwhile, Alistar back up top now trying to pressure against Ezreal as we see Jarvan branching and off. Down at the bottom, there, another, another one of those 2v1 ganks. This time, Confidari is coming down. Although Envy not able to land that, well, he got that um, ult there from Garen. Uh, was able to take down Nunu, but Confidarius quickly cleaned up after Sauron comes back. 2v1 gank that time going in the opposite direction. Uh, this time it was against point defense. Uh, meanwhile, we saw Painkiller getting a really good bandage toss onto MMKH, but MMKH distorting just in time to actually jump away from him as he followed through with the bandage toss. Top lane, it's a 2v1. Point defense once again with the 2v1s wherever there isn't focus from the enemy team, but bandage toss comes in with the Crystal of Death from following right away. Ezra will still go down, and Jarvan now goes with the ult onto Grand, but that locks him in right next to Alistar. Pyroclasm is bouncing everywhere, helps pick up the kill onto our Star also picked up a kill onto LeBlanc for a double with Amumu finishing off that fight. Pex is looking really strong. Bottom lane, we do see another 2v1 onto Udyr, and they should be able to get this kill, but will they be able to capitalize as Garen shows up? Garen's going to go and start spinning right away, zoning out LeBlanc. That leaves Udyr to sustain and fight against this Nunu. And look at LeBlanc's health. Nowhere to be seen. Picks up that health really barely making a getaway. Garen's just going to turn right back and zone out this Nunu. Gets the snowball. As Garen comes for the save, LeBlanc actually turned right back around, going to start channeling onto the Boneyard. Will Ezreal get here in time? It is the objective. It's pretty important right now. Ezreal seems to be channeling that ultimate. It's going to break the channel. Gives him just enough time to follow through. The passive has been used, so he gets a free first kill onto LeBlanc. Nunu still fighting off two of these champions. Can Udyr live? Comes back for the channel onto the tower. Trades damage with Garen from the tower. Excellent play. Nunu does pass. pop. Necrogen uses that revive to get down there right away but he doesn't have a used his garrison before the fight had ended in order to uh, interrupt and slow it down, but he is able to stop it at neutral there and chase them away as his allies come back to life. And uh, Infeed playing an excellent Udyr so far this game.
Wow, and Haveheart is living with a sliver of health, just kiting excellently alongside Ezreal, using that dot damage to pick up a, a kill and help take down Alistar. Meanwhile, Ezreal tries to channel the windmill, but gets interrupted by Jarvan. Jarvan is not happy. It's just fighting Ezreal straight up, jumps right back through to help take him down and defend the windmill. Point defense still holding on to that 3-cap. Meanwhile, LeBlanc... Uh, meets the sad mummy, but mummy's just gonna go back to the mini wave as LeBlanc jumps over Necrogen the wall. Doing some bushes, absolute zero play, taking a big chunk out of Convidari's health, but Sauron not terribly durable down there right now, not able to really capitalize on that gank, and he's gonna go ahead and back away for a moment, kind of circling around, letting his cooldowns refresh. Now coming in around behind Confidarius, doesn't doesn't use that snowball though. Unfortunately, minions are getting pushed up on the uh, tower now. It's only going to help that get neutraled out a little bit quicker. And Nunu does go down. They are going to pick that up. But Sauron is on his way down. On top of the map, however, Tower PA goes in with an ultimate to capture Ezreal there. But he's missing a bone 2v1 with the painkiller coming into that fight from behind. And a lot of hurt on as well. It's been very active both top and bottom on the map so far. Lissa can get taken down on the top and they're going to cap that. But Sauron back at bottom again trying to unseat Infeed and not quite able to do so. Infeed playing very well bottom lane despite all the pressure, despite a couple of the kills. Not losing his posture bottom lane and holding strong, just delaying because they did get the windmill. So he's in no rush to try to get that. The absolute zero tries to zone out Udyr, but Udyr just waits for it and then walks right back and puts down the garrison. The tower is helping this Udyr so much. Udyr just bouncing back and forth so good for this one person tower defense. But now it's going to be a 3v1. So Infeed actually needs to get out of there since I was just going to stick onto him. Knows that Alistar will come and support. Great combo by Alistar securing that kill. Garen shows up and just backs out right away as soon as he uses his garrison to delay that capture just a little bit more. But they're not too worried. They have the three cap. Hex has been leading and cuts off Alistar as he tries to come up to this refinery. Bandage toss backwards, stopping his advancement as we do see Ezreal channeling for a little bit longer. Hate Carter puts on a ton of damage alongside Ezreal's burst. Jarvan now silenced by Garen. Ezreal hops over for guaranteed skill shots. The burst coming out from everywhere so much. And there is the Crystal Sand when it catches the Zelda. He gets knocked back. Painkiller now on to LeBlanc. LeBlanc uses the distort and ban Oh wow! Dodges the bandage toss, distorting backwards to the origin of the original use. However, uh, we'll get taken down by Ezreal. Well, there's a distortion there. I completely lost LeBlanc on my camera for a second, but they do have uh, a couple players that had to recall following that engagement. So it looks like Sauron and Lissic are probably going to be safe to take this tower back. Talos PA, is he going to go up for the top? Yes, he's going to move up there to investigate and see if he's able to make a play for that. Necrogen in feet down on the bottom. We're seeing that the, the turtle stance, eat minion thing going on. The gangs have been pretty active, so I suspect we'll see more of that before the game is out. Ping going down up at the top. Talos PA taking some damage. Confortarius really extending out there to get into that fight. And landing the, the, the stun on the half hard, but breaking the chain before it's actually able to rock. Lissick's in a bad spot. I can't for everyone on my screen. Sauron in a sandwich over there. Lissick comes in to try and save him, but isn't able to get there. One second too late. A lot of damage gets put on Lissick now. It looks like just MMK, the most fragile champion out of the group, still alive up at the top side of the map, is going to try and take down... No. Nope. Ezreal is... Well, he's going to get uh, Garen down, but Ezreal is able to clean that up. And point defense just has to defend uh, for another, I don't know, 12 seconds or so, and then this game is theirs. Yeah, man, just Pex's team play has been so good this game. Really utilizing all their ultimates excellently. Brand getting some really good pyroclasms thanks to Amumu's Crystal of the Sand Mummy. I have to give it to Painkiller. Excellent, excellent play. Just using all the abilities for the entire team and not just for single play. Uh, using it really for disruption and saving Ezreal and Brand. Brand gets a free kill as Ezreal chips away at Shin Zhao. We see Alistair trying to come back around, pressuring that Boneyard. They are desperate, but they're not going to get a neutralized. Oh, they do get a neutralized over at bottom at the Boneyard. Brand and Ezreal not quick enough to stop that. They're going to need to fight off this cow if they want to secure the victory right away. He is very tanky, but he really doesn't have any other option right now. Udyr, meanwhile, is fighting off Nunu, and it's just a stale, 
stalemate between Udyr and Nunu. Alistair does eventually go down. Two people are going to be channeling down onto this Boneyard. No one near the Windmill or the Drill. So this should be in the bag for Pace Evelyn Child support. Yeah, there's really nothing left to be said once they'd secured that point. It was a very good clock stop by then. They um, were deflected up top, and these finals are going to go to Pay's Evelyn Child Sport, taking a 2-0 victory over point defense here in Dominate Dominion, uh, the DominateDominion.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament number 20, powered by Cybersports Network.